Hello, and welcome to season three of Ben and Kelly Don't Go to the Movies. I'm not Ben. I'm not Kelly, and season three is like the third time for the, the better things to happen, right? Sure. Well, I mean, we've been picked up by many new stations. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're actually in Portland now. Yes. Yeah, I noticed that. Besides our little suburb here, we're on open signal in Portland with our show. Oh, we're coast to coast. You're right, because we're in Portland, Maine, too. Hmm. Okay. So, what we lack in quality, we have in quantity. Sure, something like that. (laughs) Distribution. Thanks for picking up the Ben and Kelly show. We do truly appreciate you. Welcome to our mixed show. Let's get on with season three, shall we? I guess. Let's do it. This week, it's One Night in Miami, an Amazon Prime original. It is a fictionalized account of the night Jim Brown, Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, and Sam Cooke spent the night in a hotel room. Not like uh-huh. sexually, but they were just talking. That is a little... I, I guess I didn't understand the... Is it showing my age that like two, a bunch of people going to a hotel room suggest terrible things? Probably, yes. But at the same time, I'm thinking... It's just that your mind is warped. I'm thinking that's like a good brunch out with the, the people, but like, you know, after late at night. Kind of, yeah. It would be like, you know, normal people that would be up during the day would have brunch with friends. They yeah. have late night talks in hotel rooms with friends, I guess. Okay. I won't question that. It's Miami. Do you? Right? So, I mean, can you imagine having all these men in a hotel room together? All these these powerful... Is that kind of the idea, then? Is this is kind of just... You know, that might be why they made a movie about it, huh? So it's like three guys went into a bar, but like... Four powerful black men went into a hotel room? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Let's okay. try, watch the trailer and check it out. All right. Huh. You brothers, you could move mountains without lifting a finger. Minister Malcolm X. Good news, the chariot is coming. Who's the greatest? That's right. Jim Brown takes the ball. Your record is going to stand the test of time. All together, yeah. The entire city of Miami is celebrating. I'm the new heavyweight champion of the world, and I don't even have a scratch on my face. Oh, my goodness. Cash. 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 Why am I so pretty? (laughs) Hey, congratulations, champ. I can get used to that. Uh, I was made in America, land of the free home of the brave. This movement that we are in is called a struggle because we are fighting for our lives. This ain't about civil rights. They ain't giving black people what they really want. What's that? I was made in America. That's why I'm out here saved in America. Power. Black power. I like the sound of that. Uh, I wish I lived in America. We have to be there for each other. Uh, heard everybody rich. All I gotta do is run, jump, kick. I'm a kid in your area. Uh, I done made it to America. Uh, I'm amazed at America. Welcome to America. Okay, well, that was much more racially sensitive than the three guys walk into a bar jokes I know. So, right? Yeah. That's a, that's more a good serious. thing, right? Yeah. No, yeah. I, I was kind of like, oh. So I have to say, I'm, I'm not going to spoil much, but I have seen this film. Yes. And anybody who is worried about Leslie Odom Jr. playing Sam Cooke, don't be. He does it fantastically. You know, they're actually very similar singers. <laughs> I, I was about to say... Is there like a petition going out that's worried about 
someone... Probably. I mean, there's petitions on everything anymore, isn't there? I don't know. I will say that the guy they hired for Jackie Wilson, I'm not going to say was good. But... <laughs> okay. Well... If you're a fan of Jackie Wilson, sorry. I'll just put this down as, unfortunately, I didn't know a lot about most of these people for most of my life. True. I and mean, they're all from list. before we were born, yeah. yes. Yeah. I would say that most people should know who they are and get an, an interesting account on how these people existed outside of maybe what you've heard third person or from any history book prior to, I don't know, 2000. Right, or even just the filmed history that you have. Yeah, or, or maybe just read anything that these people have written or said or, or done. Because I would say at least half of these people, I kind of was like, whatever. Like as a kid, yeah, I was kind of like, they seem weird. And then you read the full story, it's like, oh, they had a lot going on. They did. And so, I know, you know, last season we talked about The Two Killings of Sam Cooke, which is a, yeah. another powerful movie. Yeah. No, I think that's exactly why I'm saying this. Because I'm like, who cares about Sam Cooke? Okay, he made a song about working on a chain gang yeah. stuff. Yeah, shrugs. Like love it's songs. Not a big I deal love you. And, yeah. To me, I don't know. There's a lot of songs about race today, and no one seems to freak out. Then again, most people who write songs about race today don't have them censored. That's true. That's true. So, yeah. So I, I guess that's where I'm. Even just watching this, I'm kind of like, I don't know. Like when you say someone's worried about Sam Cooke. Well, I don't know if they uh, were worried. I'm just saying, you know, when you get yeah. a legendary singer and somebody's portraying them in a movie, yeah. Yeah, I'm just sadly thinking how many people wouldn't necessarily know who Sam Cooke is today. That's probably true, too. Or at least understand the caliber of that. But they should. They should. I, I think that's important to know. Yes. Yeah, no doubt. So, good show. I'm interested to watch. Yeah, I think the trailer works. Yeah, I'm sold. It said based on true events, so I'm assuming this is a completely, like, Daydream. I think they had a beer that night and somebody saw them have a beer, so that was in the film. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. You know, based on true events, that's that's really all it takes. Fair enough. Well, I'm just saying, I think it's more of a daydream then, right? Like, this is someone like, what if these people were in a room and then they were yeah. like, this is what it would be like. This, this would be awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's not bad. That's basically every Transformers movie is a five-year-old going, beer. I'm a car. I'm a robot. Yeah. Yeah, Frank like Lawson, Megan Fox, whatever. All right, coming up next, it is another biopic with another singer. It's the United States versus Billie Holiday. I'm getting a theme here. A little bit, right? Yeah, it's cool. So this one stars Andrew Day as Billie Holiday. Okay. Their names, their last names are similar. Right? Yeah. And I think, you know, there's always Lady Sings the Blues from 1972 with Diana Ross. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, Diana Ross doesn't sound a thing like Billie Holiday. True. So, Andrew Day does do a lot better job, although... I'm going to watch the, the trailer now. Sorry. No, All it's right. fine. Am I getting off track? You can keep talking, I'm just not listening. All right, let's watch the trailer. Okay. Don't you know who this is? She was thinking of something more special. I'm downright flashy, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Billie Holiday. Reporters keep asking me, really, why you do the things you do? This is what I tell them. I love me. We love you. When I take on the NAACP says Billie Holiday is the voice of our people. I think we should integrate the audience for this show. Let's change it up a little bit. You know, blacks and whites sitting together. You know what you're getting yourself into when you decide to come on the road. Get out my goddamn clothes. I'm gonna take everything except your bra and your man. <laughs> Which one of my songs is your favorite song? Strange Fruit. Yeah, it's a song about important things, you know. Things that are going on in the country. This holiday woman's causing a lot of people to think the wrong things. It's a starting gun for this so-called civil rights movement. Those lyrics provoke people. Y'all got a plan? She's a drug addict. Exactly. I cut strange fruit. I want to sing the damn song. It's for your own good, okay? I say what the fuck I want. Sons and trees. Get her off that stage. 
No clubs, no money, no nothing. You gotta understand, baby. Right now, I'm in a situation. Would you say we could beat this, Billy? I need some now. Blood on the leaves. You're like a hammer. Come right back and it hit harder than before. And blood. He's singing it for all of us. <laughs> Ain't no other Negro star bold enough to do it. Black body swinging. I'm being followed. I'm not gonna count in no fizz. In the southern breeze. She's made something of herself and you can't take it because she's strong, beautiful, and black. Strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees. I think I'm gonna stop singing that song. Your grandkids will be singing Strange Fruit. Woo! Wow. I'm gonna go ahead and say this seems stranger than fiction. Right? Right? It- like, it's so. Everything they're talking about that is what I would make up if you were like, make something really interesting and controversial and whatnot. And yet, here we are. I'm getting the vibe that most of what was presented there was historical? Well, yeah. I mean, Billy's real, obviously. Right. But I think there's a lot of shows where they do very based on a true story kind of stuff, but I... Right, and it's because he was walking down yeah. the street eating a sandwich. And that this seems, seems more like, I'm pretty yeah. sure that's all there. And it, it's kind of interesting to see how, I don't know, it's very compelling. It is. Now, Andrew Day, who plays Billie Holiday in this, we, of course, have Diana Ross, who played her in the 1972 mm-hmm. film Lady Sings the Blues. Andrew Day, I think, has a lot better style right. closer to Billie Holiday's. Although, I have to tell you, they were playing the song Strange Fruit over the trailer there. And I'm sorry, but nothing can compare to Billie Holiday's yeah. version of that. It is so haunting. I don't know how you do that. It's kind of like if you were to get some actor to, to make, I don't know, a Michael Jordan biopic, and then you expect him to actually slam dunk. Right. It's just not going to happen, right? So audibly, good luck. Right. Sorry, you, you're you getting matched up against someone who's actually like the world's greatest at something. So, Right. Well, and I think where Andrew Day hadn't really experienced oh, no. the same things that Billie Holiday did. We have at least made some progress in that area. We need to do a lot more, but we have made some progress. I think the biggest progress noted here is that they found somebody that halfway sounds like Billy Holiday. Right. So I, I appreciate they didn't just say, hey, let's find someone that has the same skin color. Yeah, like Diana Ross, it good. you know. Right. Yeah. So that that's nice. But also I think there's a little more of the story that's being told mm-hmm. that's appreciated. And it seems wild, but at the same time, that was a weird time. Well, yeah. Apparently weirder than I I realized because everything in there seems like something you'd get out of like a CW superhero thing. This is straight out of like an OC Smallville right right thing, and it's like no, actually she was getting chased down by the FBI. Yeah, for some trumped people. up reasons. Yeah. yeah. How dare she? How dare she? Classic, classic. Well, coming up in our classic, it is another singer, another classic singer. Yeah. Ray Charles and the biopic starring Jamie Foxx, Ray. Hmm. I wonder if the FBI is going to be involved. I don't know. <laughs> it's on Peacock, so why don't we check out the trailer? Okay. Ray, I ain't going to beat around the bush with you. <laughs> you going blind. The doctor saying nothing they can do, so we got to do it ourselves. Remember how many stairs there were? Four. Good. 
Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna teach you three notes. And this is the first note right here. Play that. How y'all doing tonight? Ray Charles saw the world in ways no one could imagine. I hear like you see, like that hummingbird outside the window, for instance. I can't hear her. You hear that? Her heart just gives a beat. <laughs> he broke barriers no one thought possible. If you want me to do something special, I'm gonna need my own band. Okay, but you're gonna have to make it work, Ray. Yeah, well, I'm gonna make it do what it do, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Played what no one else dared. Nobody's ever combined R&B and gospel before. You're turning God's music into sex. All of y'all going straight to hell. If all of y'all want me to keep playing, let me hear you say amen. 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 You know I had my eye on you all night long. He feels a risk because he figures that's the way to tell she's good looking or not. Feeling Ray? Groovy, baby. You give your head to me. <laughs> Are those drugs worth losing everything? And I can hardly speak. Ray, this isn't some judge in Indiana. Our lawyers will do what they can, but. When I walk out that door, I walk out alone in the dark. I'm trying to do something that nobody ever done in music and business. Charles! We're giving you a state-of-the-art deal here. Since I'm producing my own records, I was wondering if I could uh, own my masters, too. Ray, we've never done that before. That's a better deal than Sinatra gets. Yeah. Jamie Foxx. A Taylor Hackford film. Wow. Wow. Cousin Ray. Man. I've definitely watched this before. Mm-hmm. It's a good movie. And it's a good trailer. Yeah. And... Good music. Yeah. I think it's a little oversimplified. I prefer my trailers a little more artsy-fartsy. Like, less dialogue, more visual. Okay. But meanwhile, they definitely had all those beautiful moments and... I don't know. Just me having a, a daughter who had delayed speech. Right. And understanding the the intervention that was required and the attention to detail and understanding how to give her building blocks to have a successful life ahead of her. Mm-hmm. And then seeing somebody from decades ago with everything thrown against them. Right. And then blindness on top of it. Right. It's just, Wow. I mean, I love in the movies where they always have to have some weird mud puddle eye to just prove they're blind. Well, you sure. Yeah. Whatever. And I kind of would be interested to see how much they got from people who can't see. Right. To get their insights to where he was coming from or his experience. Meanwhile, they definitely provided a lot in there right. about how... Well, he, I believe he was heavily involved in making the film because I do believe he also re-recorded all the music for it. That's right. I forgot yeah. about that. That is a good point because there, there's some piece of this where I kind of feel like how much are they interpreting for themselves right. and how much of it is actually there. But he was around. Like right. he's one of the He was still people. alive when this film was made. Yeah. So I guess that's one of the advantages this film has is that they're crediting or working with the people that they're trying to observe which right. is I feel like sometimes we go and we just take someone dead and say like oh let's appreciate them because you know they're not around boy how artsy were they right and then we can just tear them apart yeah. too no yeah. no artist is that great until they're dead right and so the fact that they were saying like here is somebody who isn't just a relic but like a piece of art right. like somebody we should probably get the last bits of Right. I remember in school when we would have people who were Holocaust survivors come to school. Mm -hmm. And my teachers were like, you're not going to see this every day. Someday this will be gone. And at the time I was like, whatever. Sure. Okay. And today I'm like, oh man, I don't 
realize how lucky I was to have that kind of sampling. Exactly. And even our World War II vets. Yeah. I mean, they just aren't here anymore. There, there's a lot of people that are gone. Yeah. That have a lot of context to let us know. This stuff, this struggle, the whole life isn't easy It is not new. And yeah. how they were able to get through it, you know, sometimes they did terrible stuff. Yeah. Or made bad decisions along the way, and they had to, you know, make... Well, I think that's a human condition. It's yeah. not... I dare you to show me somebody who's perfect. Well, I think that's where this is kind of an interesting film, because I think in a lot of ways these films show somebody who's totally helpless and just whoopsie-daisy, no big deal. And I think the idea that he struggled the entire time right. with a lot of heavy stuff like right at his feet it's pretty wild yeah I need to go watch this again because yeah. it, it's definitely not like an easy feel goody but it, it is definitely something that says you if Ray can do this then maybe you could do something else I'm not going right. to play the piano right. like that but yeah I mean I, I'm not going to be the musical genius he was ever no, but. but maybe I can make toast okay and that's good enough for me exactly documentary All right, well, we're going to go into another musical genius in our mm. documentary. Oh, cool. What Happened, Miss Simone? Oh, man. I hope it has a happy ending. Well, <laughs> well <laughs> what do you think? We'll see. We'll see. I think the only way to tell you who I am these days is to sing a song. We'll start from the beginning. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. My mother was one of the greatest entertainers of all time. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. When she was performing, ooh, she was an anomaly. Ooh, ooh, ooh. She was brilliant. She was loved. And I'm feeling good. One and only Nina Simone. Her voice was totally different from anybody else. You know how I feel. Let me listen to it again. How is she doing this? She was one of those musicians. You hear them once, next time you hear them, you say, oh, that's that same one I heard last week. People think that when she went out on stage, she became Nina Simone. My mother was Nina Simone 24-7. And that's where it became a problem. Everything fell apart. She was a revolutionary. She found a purpose for the stage. I choose to reflect the times and the situations in which I find myself. How can you be an artist and not reflect the times? Don't you know no one alive? There was something eating at her. When the show ended, she was alone, full of anger and rage. I have to live with Nina. And that is very difficult. Nina was fighting demons. She could get violent. Hey, girl, sit down. The change in her would be dramatic, mm, like a switch. Sit down. As fragile as she was strong, as vulnerable as she was dynamic, most people are afraid to be as honest as she lived. I've had a couple of times on stage when I really felt free. The high priestess of the Lord. It's Nina Simone. Nina Simone. Nina Simone. She was a genius. She was brilliant. But she paid a huge price. Whew. Wow. So I will say that you introduced me to Nina. Right. And I would say she has the vocal. I connect with her in her performances more than everybody else that we've talked about so far. Right. It, she's got that voice and that stage presence that just commands your attention. Well, it yeah. doesn't just get your attention, but it's like, no, you look over here. And that's even without her yelling at audience members. That's that defective. <laughs> <laughs> right. I really think, though, the performance, the idea is, is that when she starts performing, that is her genuine self. Right. And her authenticity really shows up. Yeah. And I think that's where she can be abrasive, because if someone's not listening, she's like, excuse me, but I am putting myself out there. Mm -hmm. I expect you to respect that. Right. And so 
I think that's where the intensity or maybe the little extra that you might observe right comes from and I think that is a lot of where people struggle I have points in my life where I look back and think I should have just taken it back 10% mm -hmm. and done better right but at the moment I didn't and I was doing what I thought was absolutely right in that moment mm -hmm. and I think that is a huge part of her that she is displaying that we all right. have and it's really challenging to watch that and right. yeah I don't know I'm distracted. I can't really evaluate the trailer because really what it does is help me relive the movie and for me to say this is not, not a cautionary tale right. so much as it is just the observation of how hard it is to find people that really love you for you. Right. And you know, when you talked about that when she's singing and she's doing her art, she's putting all of herself into it. Yeah. I've always wondered how artists feel when they go to the grocery store and they hear their records playing in the speakers while they're grocery shopping, that sort of stuff that kind of just delineates their art to just the background, you know? Right. Or maybe someone who doesn't like it, yeah, you know, and critiques it really hard. I, I think that's a real challenge we run into today where someone performs and then everyone is, you know, suddenly Simon Cowell. Right. <laughs> It's like, oh, well, I know art. This sucks. Yeah, American Idol has made yeah. a lot of armchair critics, hasn't it? Right. I'm sorry. When kids sing happy birthday to their friend, should we go and tell them all they suck? Or should right. we encourage them to be as excited as possible for that person's birthday? Exactly. And let them all just live and have yeah. a great party. And, and embrace their art and embrace what they like doing. The idea that expression itself is valuable. Right. Yeah. At some point, you don't want a brain surgeon who just is going with it and doing whatever. Right. But at the same time, it's like, okay, when you leave brain surgery and you go home yeah. and you eat dinner and you relax and you're with your family, maybe being able to dance like nobody's watching or sing and just let your feelings out should be valuable. Right. And I think that is a right. huge part of her performance that I miss in today's performance i get that these people are super trained educated super perfect in every sense uh -huh. of the word and at some point right. it just doesn't strike me as compelling i just don't get moved when someone can do a perfect broadway performance versus someone who is really in the mindset of their character and feeling something right right i don't know I think this is a good watch. I think it's a good reminder of definitely, why definitely. music has such... And the trailer makes me want to watch. I think the trailer oh, did a good job. I will say that it's kind of good to watch the trailer beforehand. If you don't know who Nina Simone is, it's valuable. If, you do, right. if you've watched it, if you know who she is, it also is valuable. So I, I will say I think that they made something that is good for everybody to understand. This is something we should appreciate. Yeah, I think so. Cool. Okay, so check it out. Thank you for joining us this week. Join us next week when we take a look at, well, animation. That'll be fun. Yeah. We'll see you then. Bye. Ben the cat, Molly, and I go Molly's. Yeah, I'm the M. Okay, I'm on to you. I like kicking the Fun. Yeah, I'm young. La la la. And I call him Mullis. I want to stay home. Then I carry. Stay home. Yeah, you do. I never did the time.